Get ready to lock and load, folks, because our heroes got a brand new toy in town. The Cobra Crusher 9000. With precision aim and snake-seeking technology, it's time to blast those slithery villains back to the swamp where they belong. First of all, create a new empty game object called Gun. Find a gun sprite of your choice and drag and drop it onto the scene. Make the sprite a child of the gun game object and call it Sprite. Reset the position of the gun and make it a little bigger if you want. I will set the scale to 2x and 2y. Set the sorting layer to player and the order to 10. Now create a new c -sharp script called Gun and remove the template code as usual. Then we create a serialized field game object for the muzzle, a transform for the muzzle position, and a game object for the projectile. To organize it, we can add the header attribute above with the text prefabs. We add another header below called config and add the float fire distance and float fire rate. All of these should have the serialized field attribute. Now we also need a transform to keep track of the player, a vector two offset to decide how far from the player the gun will be positioned, a float time since last shot, a transform to store the closest enemy, and an animator called anim. In the start method, we set anim to get component animator. We set time since last shot to fire rate. And using gameObject.FindPlayer, we set the player variable. Then in the update method, we say transform.position equals vector2 player.position plus offset. Then we need a new method called find closest enemy. First we set closest enemy to null, then we store all enemies in an array called enemies. Then we use a for each loop to loop through all enemies in the array and calculate the distance between the enemy and the gun using vector 2.distance and pass the gun's position and the enemy's position. If distance is less than fire distance, the enemy is close enough to be shot. Then we set closest enemy to the enemy in the current iteration. Call find closest enemy in the update method so that we keep looking for the closest enemy in every frame. Now, back in the Unity editor, we find the muzzle sprite. Set its position and resize it. When you are happy with the position and size, drag and drop it into the prefabs folder to make it a prefab then we can delete it from the scene. Now make a prefab out of the gun object as well and double click it to get into prefab mode. Then we create a new empty game object as a child of the gun called muzzle position and position it where we want the muzzle to be visible when shooting. Then assign muzzle position to the gun script and assign the muzzle flash to the muzzle. Now we create a new public method called setOffset. It takes a vector 2, which will be the offset distance from the player. In start method, we set the offset to a new vector 2 of 1 and 0 0.5. Now we also need a method to make the gun aim at the closest enemy. We call the method aim at enemy and check that the closest enemy is not null. If so, we set make a vector 3 direction, which equals to the closest enemy's position minus the transform dot position, then call direction dot normalize. Then we set the float angle to mathf dot atten 2 and pass direction y and direction x times rad 2 deg to get the angle.
Then we can set transform.rotation to quaternion Euler and pass 0, 0, and angle. And type transform.position equals vector2 player.position plus offset. To set the offset of the gun from the player, Then we call aim at enemy from the update method and test the game. We can see that the gun now aims at the snakes. Now back in the script we need a shooting method. Type void shooting and if closest enemy is null we just return from the method. Otherwise we set time since last shot to plus equals time dot delta time. If time since last shot is greater than fire rate we shoot and reset the timer. The shoot method will be a void that instantiates the muzzle flash. Call instantiate and pass muzzle, muzzle position, and transform dot rotation. Then we set the parent to this transform and destroy the muzzle flash after 0 0.05 seconds. Now call shooting from the update method. If we test the game now, we can see the muzzle flash when shooting, but we need to make it bigger. But what's the point of shooting if we have no projectile? That's what we will be making now. Find a suitable circle sprite in the sprites folder, drag it into the scene, call it projectile, and resize it to your preferred size. Give it a rigid body 2D that we set to kinematic, freeze the rotation and position, and give it a box collider 2D2 that we set to as trigger. Make a prefab out of the projectile and create a new C-sharp script called projectile and add it as a component. Add a float variable called speed and set it to 12. Then, in the fixed update method, we call transform.translate and pass vector 2 dot right time speed times time dot delta time. Then, in the on trigger enter 2D method, we get a reference to the enemy script and check that enemy is not equals null to make sure that we hit an enemy. If so, we destroy the projectile game object and call the hit method on the enemy script and pass 25 damage to it. Now in the gun script, we instantiate the projectile when we shoot, just like we did with the muzzle flash. But we destroy this after 3 seconds to make sure it gets destroyed even if we miss the enemy. Now we can assign the projectile prefab to the gun script and test the game. As we can see, we now shoot projectiles towards the evil snakes. Now we go to the enemy's animator and add a trigger called hit. That is called when the enemy gets hit by a projectile. Make a transition from any state to enemy hit and add the hit trigger and remove the durations. 
Then make a transition from enemy hit to enemy idle, which should have 0.01 transition duration and 0.2 exit time. Make sure we spell hit correctly from the script with lowercase letters. Now if we test the game, we can see that the enemy's flash is white when they get hit by a projectile. Now we need to fix so that the gun changes target when we get a new closest enemy. Open the gun script again. Inside the method find closest enemy, we make a new float called closest distance and set it initially to mathf.infinity. Then we check that distance is less than the closest distance, and if so, we got a new closest distance, which equals distance. Now we can see that the gun changes target to the closest enemy all the time. And that's it for this part. Our player can now defend himself. In the next video, we will set up the gun manager to be able to give the player more guns from a script. See you in the next one.